Oh, boy. You are hamming it up. There's your people out there. Say howdy. Oh, he doesn't care. Oh, well. Hey, guys, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center here in far west Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog. Again, wandering around here, doing whatever wonder dogs do, I guess. Ask Roy Rogers. He had the first wonder dog that I know of. Anyway, welcome to part three of the great chicken experiment, or the great meat chicken experiment. Now, it's kind of morphed as we've gone along, so let me just tell you real quick. It started out as just kind of a, comp uh, not a comparison even, it started out with me just trying to raise these birds to see how viable they were. Were they more expensive, like everyone says, or... <laughs> Are they not so expensive? Well, the results are shocking. They're coming out. Uh, I will tell you this. They don't appear to be significantly expensive, more expensive than Cornish crosses, but there are differences. I did a lot of research into comparisons of meat chickens versus frankenbirds. And anyway, there's nothing that's really scientific that's done. I mean, it's some old gal in some uh, Hobbit House family um, uh, farm that said, well, I raised them up and the Cornish crosses were bigger. That doesn't tell you a damn thing, does it? I've got stats, I've got weights, I've got percentages. I got all that and you're going to get it. Nah, maybe not quite all of it now, though, because part of the morph morph morphophization, ha, ah, invented a word, uh, is that I am writing a book, a booklet. It should be somewhere between 40 and um, 50 pages going to be for sale as a book, a print book, or an e-book, or both. That'll come down the road, but I'm putting all the stats, all the information, some photos in that so that you or someone that wants to raise their own meat chickens from scratch has an easy reference because not only do I discuss the great meat chicken experiment, but I discuss in detail all about raising your own meat birds at home yourself. If it's the first time you've done it, you read this booklet, you know how to do it. Remember the three R's here of sustainability, reuse, repurpose, recycle, the three R's of sustainability, and then in that is kind of a given that we say, well, we are trying to live at as low a carbon footprint as we can. So the whole purpose of this was to see if we could utilize an underutilized resource and utilize it for a much lower carbon footprint in the end result. They're actually 12 weeks old today. By the way, it won't get much quieter around here because what I'm killing are going to be roosters that aren't crowing yet and maybe some excess hens. Let's get going. By the way, I'm sure somebody wondered why there's no pink shirt today. Pink shirts are long sleeves, and i got to keep pulling them up, which stretches the sleeves out. So I put on a short sleeve shirt today. Uh, anyway, I thought I'd cut in here. Uh, I got my free-range birds. There were only three of them. I figured there were only three. Now I'm starting on the birds, and one of the things that has to be shown in the book and in this video for you is I want it to be comprehensive. I want you to know how much bigger they are. So here's uh, here's what I've done. I'm going to take four birds. This was the first one. He weighed exactly three pounds. The live bird weighed three pounds. The carcass, after I did that to it, was one pound, 12 ounces, or uh, 28 ounces. I have here 14 ounces of meat. Came out to 50%. That was easy. I wasn't going to give you the percentage, but it's 50%. Now, I'm probably... That's where I am now, and I'm going to do four of them so I get a representative sample. And So let's get on with it. Hey, guys, it's been eight days. Wow. What a whirlwind. You know that old saying, the best laid plans of mice and men? Well, I had, a, I had plans of showing you more, showing you some of the activity here. Uh, quite honestly, there were some things I wasn't real happy with that went on in the processing that I'm not going to mention, but... It just wasn't worth it to show you any of the processing. I did a, I did a video on processing chickens. But here, uh, let me just... Um, behind me are the survivors. They're, they, they buy a couple extra weeks. I'm going to get to them eventually. But to tell you the truth, I am exhausted from all of this. Uh, there's 36 back here. Plus the ones we released uh, uh, to grow up out here that were hens or we like the looks of the roosters. We actually processed, and I don't know how we got it exact, we actually processed 250 birds. It appears that my feed-to-weight gain ratio for the live bird 
was 3.15 to 1. Not bad when you're considering that everybody always gets 3 to 1 on Cornish Crosses. Now we're going to see what I get on Cornish Crosses. They're coming the end of this month. It's August 10th right now, so they're coming on the 30th, I think, or the 31st. Then I'll raise the Cornish Crosses. We'll do um, uh, two videos on that and then the final video. So um, with all the help I had, it took us, uh, it took us actually two days with the helpers and I put another three days in so that's five days of working. Uh, skinning the birds like I was skinning them at first has really wore me out here. My fingers, my hands can't do much of anything. I couldn't think right to get this video together any differently than what I'm doing. We also had someone loan us a whiz-bang plucker. If you've got a whiz-bang and you get your scalding temperature right it's great for whole chickens. A lot of people got whole chickens. Remember, these were fryers. The Cornish crosses can be roasters, but these were fryers. Doesn't mean you can't roast them. It was absolutely delicious roasting. And the nursery here worked perfectly. It provided just enough space with the extra part that, um, that Alex and I built. Uh, it was just getting crowded when they hit 12 weeks. And also, as I said uh, earlier, that bird that Debbie and I ate at 16 weeks was tough. The 12-week birds are perfect, but they are smaller fryers. But this worked perfectly. Uh, I recommend, highly recommend to people the deep litter system, unless you're in an extremely wet area, for example, like the swampy part of Florida we lived in, any place that's always wet, no. But the deep litter system, it just worked perfectly. We've cleaned it up a couple of times to get the extra feed out. There is no odor in here, even though we've just had 300 birds out of I highly recommend deep litter. I recommend doing them outdoors like this too because we got the right amount of fresh air. Insects flying in wondering, ooh, what's that? They do smell the birds, so they'd come in and the birds would eat them. Worked out really good. And in fact, being it's August right now, uh, I'm posting this in a day or two. If you want to do the, uh, the same thing we did with, uh, with the roosters, I would recommend that you order them like right now. Get them in while the nights are still hot. Get them started so that you don't have to keep them in a brooder. Uh, as long, you will have to have a heat lamp on them. Get them started now and then raise them up. As you get into your colder weather 12 weeks from now, it'll be cold, it'll be just about the right time to slaughter them. So, the initial results are very, very encouraging here. In the next video that I'm going to be doing, which will be, the, it'll be uh, part four, and part four will be the Cornish crosses arriving and getting them in here. I'll have the final numbers written down that I can give you on, the, um, on these guys, but uh, as I said, 3.15 to 1 comes up to, uh, one way I figured it, it was 5% more, the other one was 7% more on the feed costs. But because the birds cost over $2 a bird less than ordering them, um, ordering the Cornish crosses, we did come out quite a bit ahead. I'll have that number. I'll have it all together. But I did want to get back. I did want to do this video and get it finished. Apologize that I'm so exhausted, but I really had no idea that this was as big a job as it was, even with help and even with the uh, whiz-bang plucker. So be prepared for that. But by golly, if you're thinking about trying the roosters, get that order in now because... 90 days from now, you're into the cold weather, put them in the freezer. I now have two freezers jammed full of birds. I've got to go and uh, smoke about 15 of them that I've got sitting there. And the big thing, for those of you that do follow me, today, right now, Sherman is at the vet having that skin cancer removed from his back. Uh, I don't think I talked much about it, but uh, Sherman, the one-eyed toothless dog, nine years old, um, being a, an American hairless terrier, they are very prone to skin cancer. And him and the other two that I got, the last three bird, uh, dogs I got from um, another breeder, um, couldn't keep them out of the sun and they got spots. And before I got the money to put him in for surgery, it erupted. So we're going to have a little bit of problem getting rid of that. Right now my fingers are crossed for Sherman the One-Eyed Toothless Dog. Um, besides Cascade the Wonder Dog, Sherman the One-Eyed Toothless Dog is... Uh, the other star here. I'm just an accessory. So until the next video, um, get out there and work with your chickens. Get out there and start trying to live sustainably. Do something. That's the only way anything gets accomplished. And it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Education Center saying see you later.